Okay, hi there. Testing, one, two, three. Hi, this is Dave Smith. A lot of people have been wondering how I've been able to insert images and videos using HTML into my web posts on the uh, discussion forums here. So I decided I was going to help it out here and make a video tutorial for you guys. If you look at the, uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. There I go again. <laughs> Uh, if you look at the discussion forums, the discussion topics, you can see I've got, you know, colorful images and stuff like that in my posts. But frankly, I think the discussion forums tend to get kind of boring because you got people responding to people responding to people just like this, you know. Uh, Evelyn says something, Frank said something, Raymond said something, short little post right here. It's kind of boring, but if you look up, where my posts are and you can see I've got some color in the writing I've got images and pictures and funny stuff even you know squirrel drinking a beer hey cool <laughs> I like that like that squirrel you know or even you know charts and graphs and some of these I've been able to encode to where if you click on them they'll open in a whole new window and you can actually read and see what they're about and what it says because um, of course right here is really too small to see and what you know you can't tell what it is uh, the easiest way I've found to go about that, though, that I can help somebody else to understand how to do, is to take them to blogger.com, okay? Uh, blogger.com has an HTML editing capability, so you can insert an image from just about anywhere and get HTML from it and then use it back here in the post. Um, one thing at a time, let's get signed up for you. If you go to... As you can see here, I'm on www.blogger.com, and you hit the sign up button right up here in the upper right hand corner. Click that, and it'll take you through the paces of signing in, signing up an account, and all of that. I'm sure everybody has an email by now. You can all do your thing. Sign up, create you an account. Okay? I happen to already have one, so I'm going to skip on ahead and jump into mine. I have a uh, blogger account I, I have used for a really long time. I used to be an affiliate marketer. Ooh, yuck. Yeah, affiliate marketer. <laughs> never mind. I never said that. Ignore that. Okay, now we're going to go to my dashboard. If you look at my control dashboard, here it is. Uh, I have some posts, whatever. You guys don't even really need to actually post anything. You can create a blogger account. You now have a blog. And, you know, blogs are helpful, though. And I'll encourage that because there's a lot of things you can do on an actual blog and make your internet presence known. If you're a master's degree college student by now, then yeah, you're going to want to have an internet presence. Get yourself known out there. So get a blog going. Uh, Blogger is owned by Google. So anything you do in your blog is going to come up in a Google account search. So if somebody's doing a search and you've written a blog on uh, internet marketing or newest advances in global communication, people look for a Google search of newest advances in global communication, Google owns Blogger. So if you have a blog held by a blogger and that shows up, the people are going to know who you are and they're going to know, hey, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. Okay, now, in this week's forum right here, this is week three, discussion one right here. <clears throat> I've already posted in this forum and I looked in there just a little while ago uh, you can read what I what I wrote, whatever. <laughs> I look right here. Okay, here is the the network infrastructure topic, you know. And then of course I responded. I have colorful writing. I have, you know, we're talking about keeping costs low. So I put a money belt. I put a belt on money, squeezing it to emphasize. Yes, squeezing money, cost efficiency. I've got my APA citation and quote down here. You know, well, somebody has answered me. A guy named Troy. You know, Troy is actually pretty cool. I like Troy. So I read what Troy had to write, and he brought up a good point. And this is one of the things I like to do in the discussion forums, rather than just saying something drab and showing off what I know or what I read. You know, I read what Troy wrote, and he said you'll talk about uh, upgrading sensibly when it comes to uh, being cost efficient and in investing in the latest and highest quality network infrastructure for your company. Okay, well, if you're investing in a network infrastructure for your company, yes, you don't want to have a whole lot of money. You don't want to buy everything there is to buy for everybody. So I'm going to skip ahead. Now, if you have some text that you want to copy, of course, you can grab it all right here. <coughs> I have it in a notepad. I use Komodo for this, but 
for you guys who don't have a Komodo or know what it is, and why bother? The best way to insert this non-formatted is by using the HTML up here in the tab. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It has a lot to do with why your web browser does what it does, why these tabs are up here, uh, why these tabs are up here. Your operating system browser works on HTML. If you have an HTML coded browser open, go ahead and right click sometime and take a look at the menu that shows up when you show up, when you right click on the, the browser. And you see right here, view source. View that source right there and it shows you all of the HTML of that page. This right here is called PHP. It's a uh, hypertext preprocessed text. But where you see the little carrot right there and right there, you know, this is the comment right here. Okay? They're talking about this is JavaScript, actually, is what that is. It tells you there's a slash slash means there's a comment right there. You don't see that on the web page, but whoever's scripting this page does see that. They've got all these variables listed here. Okay, URL is correct. Everything is good. Here's your, again, here's your uh, HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Take a look at that on some of the pages if you're interested in learning what HTML is. And there's a, a plethora of tutorials available for that as well. Uh, mine right here, what I'm doing, what, you're seeing this raw text come out of a text editor. There's nothing added to this text in this text editor. I came straight from here, no formatting whatsoever, to here. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the Compose tab, and now it's going to add some formatting. Because what we're going to do is we're going to grab what I wrote. I'm talking to him about uh, you know buying everyone an Android phone and iPad being a not very cost efficient means of being doing business. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> we're going to grab this, Control A, and select everything. And we're going to add a little bit of markup to it by choosing a better font. It's in Georgia, naturally. See how it doesn't change? If I grab a different font, it's going to go to Times or Arial, you know. I don't like those. I like Georgia. It's a nice, it's got the reefs on it. It's a pretty cool little uh, font right there. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit, though, because if I don't, it's going to show up really tiny in the discussion form. Um, we have to add a little bit of color. That's just me. The color markup tab is right here. See where it says text color? And like everything else, you can see an icon. Hover over it. It shows you how yeah, there's a link. Here's your formatting, your justification. If you're going to put bullet points or numbered lists, you can do that too. You can quote stuff. Uh, you're going to add an image, which we can do. You can add a, vim Im a video, which we're going to do. But right here, we're going to grab... Since I have something that's based in pretty much blue already in the image that I'm going to use. I'm going to contrast it with a really dark, almost blood red. You almost can't even tell it's changed. It's good enough for this intent and purposes. Now we're going to add an image. When you click on the add an image, Blogger Image Uploader shows up right here. And here's your justifications down here. You can set it for no justification. You can justify it, align it left. You can center the justification. Or you can put a right justification. I like to put it in line with the text, that way I don't have a big huge picture up here above my post later. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the image from where I have it stored. It's in my hard drive on <laughs> the, the video folder or image folder I use for my discussion forums. Um, I believe it's called Gadgets. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, electronic Gadgets, that's what it was. Or is that? Down here, down here, down here. Some of these images you guys may have even seen before. Uh, no, it's not there. Okay. Let me take a look here. I like that one. Here it is. That's the one I wanted to use. Sorry that took so long. I might edit that part out. <laughs> before I post this. Hey, you never know. Okay, image has been added. See, it ha I'm on a really fast, powerful computer right here. This is the HP DV9 Multimedia Center computer. Uh, and here's your image. Here's your post. See, right here. And here's your image right there. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to hit the HTML tab. And now, see all this HTML formatting right here? Now, you've got your span and your font family. It equals Georgia. 
you got your size, you got your color. It's using the uh, hexadecimal color system right here. Good point, Troy. Rah, rah, rah. We're going on. And here's your image formatting right here. Okay. Got your height. Got the float to the right. Remember I said I wanted it on the right-hand side of the post? Well, here it is. It's on the right-hand side of the post. I can actually change that and decide no, no. I want to go ahead and put it on the left side of the post. And we can do that. So I change that to left. And lo and behold, now the image is on the left. Pretty cool, huh? Now you have these grips. We call these grips. See where I want to grab this? Or this one up here, the cursor changes to arrow. Now we have the, multi the universal move symbol right here where it's four arrows plus. I can move this anywhere I want. If I decide I want to downsize it, I grab the arrows right here and bring it down. Whoa, much smaller, much smaller, yes. Actually too small, don't like it. Bring it back up a little bit, okay, cool. Now I've got my text down here, but the picture is way up here. Well, uh, there's two things I can do here. I can either backspace, there we go, right, put that down there, or I could have grabbed the image and moved it right there. Ah, looky there. Oh, don't want it down there, that's too low, right? So let's center it a little better, no? How about we put it back where it was? Yeah, that works. <coughs> That works. I like that. That works for me. I have no scroll bar here and no scroll bar down here. My post fits the window. I'm ready to post it. So what do you do? You hit the edit HTML again. Just click somewhere in there, right? Just click somewhere in there. Hit Control A on your keyboard. That's going to highlight all of that text. Since I'm not going to save this, this is my school HTML file, as you see up here. Okay, since I'm not going to save this, I'm going to go ahead and Control X and cut that. Okay, because that's what this file is for. I generally use this post right here for HTML markup. That's what I started doing. So now we'll go back to the learning plan. We have that post on the clipboard right now. So we go back to the learning plan, back to that discussion forum. It's going to open up the window and show you that discussion again where Troy said what Troy said. <coughs> okay, Troy didn't respond, respond to me. Troy posted his own thing, which is cool. You know. So you reply right here, lower right hand corner, you hit the reply button. Here's your reply. Okay, and here's my box right here. Okay. We have nothing in here. So how do you put HTML in there? Well, see where it says rich text view? Anytime you see rich text view, chances are there's going to be an HTML editor hidden in there somewhere. And in our case, lo and behold, there it is, view source. Okay. Now, the one reason they put this here is because they want you to be able to check your your length. If you read this over here, the respond length is, is limited to 3,000 characters, okay? But you can count the number of characters by clicking the check length at the HTML button. So when you have your post right in here, and then you want to check the length because you only have 3,000 characters, you can click this right here, and now you see your source, you can check your length. Well, I'm taking advantage of that because I'm using the HTML editor to enter HTML. Control V, post. Now, remember what we just did at blogger.com? Well, it's here now. Hit the text, and there we are. There's your text in that text window. This is your rich text view. We call it rich text because this is where you see the color, you see the font, you see the sizing, you see the image. This is everything rich right in here. Okay? You see HTML, now you see the source. That's why it says the new source, because now you see the source. Okay? If you want to check the length, you can see I've only got 1,036 characters. If I wanted to keep going with a long-winded response, which I usually do tend to do, sorry guys, I just do that. Got a lot to say, I enjoy this, this is what I do. So now we're ready. Guess what? Hit the post reply button down here, and when you post your reply, now all that rich text with the color and the font, and everything you just did is right here and look there is your image in your post and like I said it's encoded through bloggers encoding in their source that when you click on this it's going to open in a whole new window so somebody can look at what you put in there they might wonder what the heck is that green thing well you can see that green thing up close and it looks like some kind of I don't know, sound device or something it's a gadget it's a gizmo and that's what I'm talking about in my post that you don't want to buy everybody a, a whole bunch of gadgets and gizmos working for your company if they don't need them, right? Okay, so here's my post. Good point, Troy. Okay? And there you go. You close this out. 
it stays there. Next time you open the discussion forum, after the page refreshes on you, <laughs> there you go. Hit the discussion forum, open it on up, and there you are. Your post is going to be there. Everything you said, everything you wrote, everything you entered is going to be just like that. <clears throat> I was hesitant about showing people how to do this because, you know, granted I do some pretty cool stuff, but a lot of people got to really decide what they want to put in the discussion forums. We obviously don't want big, huge pictures in there. You know, I generally try to keep them between, you know, 250 pixels by 300 or maybe 300 by 300. I size them in pretty well, like you saw me do back here when I grabbed a hold of the grips. I can actually right click and repaste these because that information is still on my clipboard. Uh, since the camera is running, apparently my right click menu is kind of slow. Yeah, remember all this? It's still there on my clipboard. I haven't done anything with it. I mean, you can stretch this back out to where it was. And, uh, that's not going to look real good in your post, is it? You know, back where I had it is probably the best thing to do with it. Keep it down small. Keep it right next to your post, in line with your post. And again, look for over here. If you have scroll bars over here, the scroll bar is over here. Try to size your post down a little bit, and it's going to look a whole lot better when you go back here and post it on your learning plan. Okay? Does everybody understand how that works? Have a good one, guys. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial.